right, here we go. I have two examples here because I have two ceramic sections. So this one I worked on a little bit today and I'll show it to you. But first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to roll out your arteries again. Just I showed you last week, but I'm going to show you again. Um, and then I worked on this one a little bit today so you can kind of see um, sort of like a, a different stage. It's like a cooking show, right? Like we have stage one and then stage two. So I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to show you how to make these arteries again. So you might notice as you open up your bag of clay, you've got all this like dry clay that's going to sort of flake off and land on your table. You want to um, try to get that off before you work with your clay. You really don't want clay, dried clay in your wet clay for lots of reasons. Uh, one of them being that dried clay um, has already shrunk and it can cause cracking problems in your wet clay. Alright, we've got our nice fresh clay here. You guys keep in your hopefully keeping your clay nice and wrapped up. Now I'm wedging by dropping it on the table. Sometimes I find that that really compresses the clay really well. I do a little wedge. So the reason we wedge, um, especially if we work with this clay already, there could be like drier sections and wetter sections. So we want to kind of mix it up and use our hands kind of like a KitchenAid mixer where we're sort of mixing the moisture and making it even throughout. I'm doing ram's head wedging. So that's sort of the pushing down in the center and rolling back with my fingertips so that it looks like that. Okay, so that feels pretty good to me. When you're rolling out a coil or a slab or anything in clay really, it's good to compress your particles first. It just prevents cracking down the line. All right, so I'm gonna rip this off and I'm gonna make two coils. So first thing you do is you just kind of squeeze it into a coil shape. And then you wanna to start to roll. Now when you're rolling, you wanna avoid trying to, you don't wanna do this like quick jerky motion with a hard pressure. If you do that, you're gonna get a very geometric coil. So you wanna just be really gentle with it. And you wanna roll from your wrist to your fingertips and wherever the coil is thickest is where I'm going to put the pressure. So you can kind of see I'm sort of moving my hands around and I'm moving them to the areas that are thickest. So we get now sometimes I'll just kind of tap the ends here to keep those under control. All right, I'm going to chop this in half. And then I'm going to use a paintbrush to hollow out the inside. So you're going to just stick it in the middle and then you're going to slowly guide it through. Just kind of have to feel if it's still in the center. And pop it through. And then you're going to roll it again. And that paintbrush in the center is going to hollow out your coil. Now we talked about thickness, clay thickness last week. Um, the reason we hollow things out is so that they don't explode and that uh, moisture has a way to evaporate and escape before we put it in the kiln. So this could be two arteries right here. And it really just depends on like how anatomically correct your design is and also your drawing, how many arteries you really need to make. And it's always a good idea to make maybe one or two extra in case. So I'm going to pinch that open, and I'm not going to do anything to these yet. I'm just going to have you know, sort of like the hollow tubes. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys too about the stages of working in clay. So there are many stages in working in clay. This is the wet stage where everything is super malleable, um, easy to work with, kind of floppy. Um, and when we're working in this stage, we're really just dealing with the basic form, the basic form of our structure, our sculpture, our vessel that we're throwing on the wheel, whatever we're making. Um, we're not dealing with surface or carving or detail or anything like that yet. We're just dealing with form. Uh, the next stage is called the leather hard stage. And that stage 
is when you have your form pretty much kind of done and you, it, it's where you want it to be, right? You've bent things, you've moved things around, you've placed them where you want them to be. Then you let it dry a little bit, just a little bit. So it's still pretty wet, but you can't bend things anymore. Um, and it holds its own, right? Like, for example, this is pretty floppy. If I were to lay this on the table and not prop anything underneath it, and then I put water on it and I wrapped it up, this little artery is probably going to fall off or drop down because it's too heavy and it's not dry enough to really be strong. Um, so as you guys are drying your pieces or just saving your pieces for working on them the next time, it's a good idea to find some props um, around the house that you can use to kind of prop them up as they're getting to their next stage. Um, you might have experienced that already. You might have taken your heart out and all of a sudden it's got like these big kind of like, they look like wounds, cuts, and then your pieces collapsed or opened up. And that's because the water and the weight of the clay is really heavy and it has the tendency to kind of crack open. So let's go back to stage two, leather hard clay. When you're working with leather hard clay, that's the stage at which you do your details on the surface. You start to carve, you start to kind of um, use tools like this loop tool where you're kind of like scraping away and smoothing. You can start using your rib tools to smooth things out. Um, you can start using your texturizing tools to really give it interesting textures. Um, and you'll find that carving on a leather hard piece of clay is a lot easier than um, carving on a really wet piece of clay because it just flakes off. And it's a wonderful um, time to really get those details. All right, so I think I have enough arteries here, enough fingers. I'm gonna teach you how to attach. So I'm gonna use this heart here. So this is the step at which you want to look at your drawing again. So here I had the two versions of my drawing. Um, I don't know what perspective you can actually see this, so I'll do it this way. Um, so I chose this one here, and this one was an artery kind of in the hand, palm of the hand, but the arteries are going to kind of turn into fingers, and then I was going to put that wedding ring, the Vena Amoris, on this finger here. So it's, I'm really kind of sculpting a hand right now. So I want to look at this drawing, and I also want to look at maybe my own hand, and then references to the heart to figure out where to place things. Um, so I'm maybe take all of the um, coils that I rolled out and I can kind of decide um, which ones go with which ones. You know, I can cut these down, you know. You really look at your hand. The thumb is a little thicker, depending on your hand, right? And of course the pinky's a little thinner. And then these th three are about the same thickness but different lengths. So maybe start off longer. I mean, I can really just kind of use, isn't that interesting how the heart is kind of the size of your hand? That's kind of curious. All right, so maybe this one can be a little shorter. Chop it off with my pumpkin carver. Maybe this one a little shorter. This is a slightly larger than my hand. Um, and one other thing that's kind of cool is I mentioned this before, clay shrinks, but it really, really shrinks when you put it in the kiln. So when you pull your piece out of the kiln, it is gonna be about a half an inch smaller everywhere, which is amazing. And something you have to kind of consider when you're making functional objects, that it's gonna be smaller than you make it. So, and then save these pieces. You want to kind of squish them up and put it at pot and re-wedge. You don't want to waste any of your clay. So I have all my fingers. So next step, we're going to attach these. So what I want to do is create a really nice surface area to attach. So I'm going to stick my finger in this coil and I'm going to flare out this wall and create a little bit of a taper. And then I'm just going to kind of fit it right on there. And as I do that, I can kind of figure out where I want to put it. And I can take another tool. I'm going to use a needle tool. If you don't have this, you can use a pumpkin carver. Or you can use anything really that's kind of sharp in your kitchen. 
and I'm going to trace where that's going to go. I'm going to flip this over. Now you can use your fork if you want to, but I find with smaller attachments that I really want to use something that's a little bit more um, refined so I can really get in there and make sure everything is um, scored up. So I've cross-hatched that. And then of course I have to cross-hatch this side. Okay, um, little note here. If you are sculpting something that is going to be closed here, what you've done now is after you attach this, you've got trapped air in this finger or this artery um, and your piece is going to explode and your finger is going to pop right off in the kiln. So if you trap air at any point in your sculpture, you have to take a tool and poke a hole to let that air escape. Now that hole can really be as small as a needle tool poke. So I might want to just take this and make a little poop like that and then attach. So to attach, you want to put a little water on the finger and a little water on the hand. Find it again, find my placement, and then compress. Compression is really the key to attach anything. So I compress first with my finger, and then you'll notice this is kind of where our piece gets really a lot more fragile than it was as just the heart itself. I'm using my finger to seal this foil. And then if you have, you know, you have an area that's a little bit hard to get into, you can start using tools. So that's what these clay tools were designed to be extensions of our fingers and our hands. It's kind of like a finger, but it has different attachments on either end. And it allows us, right, an extension to kind of get into the spaces in our sculpture that we can't get into with our fingers. And the, it's harder, right? It's wood. So when I press with this, I'm going to get a different effect than if I use my fingertip. It's just going to be a different texture. Um, I'm not going to worry about bending that yet. I think I might go in and attach all my arteries first. So I'm going to sculpt this edge a little bit. You want to try to do as much sculpting um, as you can before the end because then you just have less carving. So if I really want this to look like the opening of an artery, look at some photos and just kind of study it and sort of sculpt it first before you let it dry. All right, then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to flare this out. It gives me a little bit more surface area to attach. I'm going to find that section. I'm going to take my tool and trace. Score it up. Crisscross. Might want to poke a hole in there. And now remember, we're trying to avoid um, getting thicker anywhere on our piece more than a half an inch. So that also, you have to consider, you know, okay, I didn't make this wall very thick, but I'm adding clay to this wall. So now all of a sudden I've got, you know, like a quarter of an inch thickness here, and I'm adding another quarter of an inch here. So you have to pay attention when you're adding clay to how thick you're making it. I'm going to take my finger and just attach it. I also kind of like to sort of wiggle it on there and make sure that Velcro is really working for me. Compress, compress, compress. Now some of you kind of complain that your pieces, um, you know, when you unwrapped it, they were collapsed and there were cracks in them. Um, that happened because you had too much water on your piece and it was just too heavy. So to fix those cracks, no worries, easy to fix. You're not adding more water. More water is like adding um, more water around each clay particle and it makes them slipperier and it makes them fall apart. So really the key to fixing any crack is not water, is compression. So if you had a, like a, a crack right here in your piece, you would take a scoring tool, a fork or a needle tool, and you would kind of cut into that crack, score that crack, 
and then you kind of squish it together and seal it up again. Now if you had really wet clay and you could do that, that's fine. If your clay is a little drier and you still get that crack, you might want to take what I call a band-aid coil, which is a tiny little wet coil of clay, pretty small, and I score up my crack and then I also score up that little band-aid coil, just a smidge of water, and then I kind of squish that into the crack, and then I compress. So that's how you would fix any kind of like wet crack. Okay. And if you have questions, you know, just shout them out. I can answer them while I'm doing this video. I'm going to do one more finger and then I'm going to show you guys how to manipulate. Let me cut that out. I don't like that edge. Again, I'm flaring this out. And finding where it goes. And trace. Score. The more surface area you're overlapping, where, where you're attaching, the better. And be gentle with the way I handle this. It's still very fragile. Tiny bit of water on both sides. Attach. Compress. Seal. Use my tools. All right, so say that I put all the fingers on there. And now I want to go back to my drawing and say, okay, how, how did I plan this out, right? I had the hand kind of do this, and then I had these fingers kind of curled around, and then I think I had this ring finger really bent over and then the pinky was kind of like that because I wanted it to look like a heart. So now I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to really look at my hand here and I'm going to create some creases, some realism here. I have a crease here so I'm going to use my tool to dig in. Not too far, I don't want to crack through. And then I'm going to use this tool to kind of create that crease and then I'm going to bend it. Try to make it as natural as possible. Now I want to leave this open because I want the fingertips to look like arteries. But the neat thing about this is remember you're working on a 3D object. So don't just focus on one side. The back is important too. So you want to flip it over and you could get really detailed like you could say oh well, there's a bone here that sticks out. That's in the wrong place. I need to move that up. So you can either scrape it and move it up or you can add a little bit more clay to that. And that kind of comes in the later stage. So I think it might be kind of fun to go in and put like the start of a finger nail here. So I'm just gonna use this tool and I can carve and refine later, but just a little bit of a, a finger nail. It's a little creepy. It almost looks like I chopped off the tip of my <laughs> my thumb, which is painful to even think about. But I'm going for I'm going for a double image here. I'm going for a heart, artery, and a finger. So I'm going to work with both. Okay, and then this finger I decided was going to bend a little bit, so I'm going to go in and put my creases in. Put this crease here, and then there's one up here. And those creases will actually help me bend this a bit. And this is the beauty of wet clay, is that you're so malleable. And as you're working, it can change, you know? Like, it can change from your original drawing. That's going to happen, I guarantee it. 
um, and that's part of the creative process. You do not have, need your final sculpture to look exactly like your finished, your drawing, your original drawing. All right, let's think about knuckles here. Again, we're just dealing with form. We don't have to do any carving yet, but I'm seeing that my knuckle is pretty sharp right here. So I'm gonna maybe do a little sculpting to get that angle in there. It looks a little bit more realistic and the same like where is the knuckle on my index finger I'm going to move this clay and get that knuckle in there and then I'm going to put the start of the fingernail here so let me hold this up to the camera so we have sort of the start of a knuckle the fingernails and then we flip it over and it's looking kind of big right it's starting to get bigger like I said three and a half by five this currently is seven inches by f almost four and a half but it's gonna shrink it's gonna it's gonna shrink so it's gonna shrink about a half an inch so after I curl these down and kind of curl it in it's gonna be about the right size so just shoot for like a little bit bigger than your hand and you're good all right so I'm not gonna continue to do all of them. I think you can kind of figure out um, just based on the two fingers that I did. Um, and then you want to also think about how is this sitting on the table? I can't really show you from up here, but when you're, you know, when you're putting it in a gallery space and it's on the pedestal, how do you want it displayed? So I think I decided that I wanted it to be um, like if this were the tabletop, then I want it to sit up like that. So I'm going to, while it's wet, I'm going to kind of squish it down so that I know it holds its own while it's sitting on the table. And stand back and look at it. Make sure it's where you want it to be. Because once it starts to dry a little bit and get leather hard, you can't move it like this anymore. Like I wouldn't be able to move this finger anymore. All right, any other questions? I think that's as far as I want to show you today. I don't want to step you through too many steps. All right.